Loyola, I would describe as a place that feels for a lot of people like home. I think it's a warm place. I think it's a place where you can find the space to work out who you are and to be yourself. Loyola is located on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. It was founded in 1900. The school is unique as a Jesuit high school because we're small. We're only about 220 students, co-ed. Generations of families have gone here. It was kind of like if your brothers or sisters went here, you were probably going to go here. That charm when you walk up the stairs in the front door there is still here. I mean, it really is special. It is a community. It's a family. And you really see the same faces, same teachers. And I think that's the charm of it is that you're getting that experience inside of New York City. We really want at Loyola the students to be the ones who are going to influence the world and change the world, be agents of change. Every year there's a benefit auction that Loyola hosts, and one of the prizes up for auction was spend a day with Coach A, which I couldn't pass up the chance to bid, and I ended up winning that, and I've been carrying it around in my briefcase for the last 10 years, this certificate that says spend the day with Coach A. It somewhat started as a joke with John and I, you know, it was like, oh, let's follow Freddie around because we always wondered what he did all day, you know, that sort of thing. The goal was we'd get a camera crew, just see what it would be like to spend the day with him. He has impacted so many young men and women. Part of this is just a way to say thank you to him. For generations now, he has been such a constant, and to a lot of people, I think he is Loyola. I graduated Loyola in the spring of 1987. Fred Agnosticus started at Loyola in the fall of 1987. This is Coach A's 36th year at Loyola School. When you imagine in, a, in an American high school film what the athletic director would be like, lives for sports, lives for his job, he's that guy. Fred Agnosticus, when he calls, you have to pick up the phone. He brings some kind of, of gravitas to any meeting, and our community is only richer and better by having him among us. Coach A is, you know, point blank a person for others. You know, a loving, caring, kind individual who spends a lot of his time investing in the person that's right in front of him. Coach A, to me, has uh, just uh, been a positive influence in my life. Just always somebody I could look up to and, and not be afraid to ask questions. My name is Fred Agnoskis. I'm the athletic director at Loyola School. I am the varsity boys basketball coach and the varsity girls softball coach. I also teach physical education and oversee the athletic program here at the school. When I was a kid, I wanted to play second base for the New York Yankees. But <laughs> that didn't pan out, but coaches always influenced me growing up. And they had a big impact on me in terms of being disciplined, uh, being honest, practicing hard, being a good person, and uh, being a good teammate. I found myself as a player, no matter what sport I was playing, kind of giving quiet advice to different parts of the tactics or team, and engaging in the coaches more. He's proud of his city, he's proud of Loyola, he's proud of his student athletes, and he wants to show that all the time. You will rarely see a man uh, with as kind as Coach A. Coach captures the uh, important moments in life uh, of your teacher, your student. He's recognizing that you're going through something, either joyful, he's there for you. If you're struggling, he's there for you. Everybody should be so lucky to be able to have somebody like Coach A in their life. I feel like I go from my house to my home or from my home to my house when I come to work. I don't feel like I'm coming to work. I felt very at ease here and very comfortable, and like I belonged. It's almost like a voice came over and said, you belong here, and I, I never left. I was offered other positions, but I said, no, I'm gonna stick around here. I like it here. You get to know kids for four years. You watch them grow from 13-year-olds to 17, 18-year-olds, and you're amazed at when they come back and what they become engineers, architects, surgeons, teachers, and Loyola provides that base where kids feel safe, they're listened to, they're corrected, they're challenged, and uh, they rise up. And it's based on uh, the brilliance of the people here. It's not easy, first of all, being a, a high school student or just a kid in general. What I've noticed is that he's able to build uh, connections with people from all different walks of life. His low-keyed approach to things and yet his ability to really nurture students and provide the support that they need to become their best selves. And not just as athletes, but they recognize that Coach A wants them to be their best selves in, in all ways. I stand down at the door and I hold the door open and I say good morning to all of them. Get a read on kids and you get them pick-me-ups if they need them. And just have good jovial fun. I'm going to miss the dailiness of it. Sports Night 
documentary. Sports Night documentary. Oh. Hey, Kayla. Hey, how are you? You really hey, 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 hey. Good, good. Coach Jay. Oh. Hey, hey. Hey. What's up, Coach Jay? Hey. 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 Hey, money. Hey. 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 Hey, Diana. Hey, 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 Sabrina. Hey. Oh, you're the coach. Hey, Larkin, all star. How you doing? Good to see you. Hey, see you tonight. Good. See you tonight. Good. See you tonight. Big night. Guppy. Hey, you in the musical? I oh, I tried out yesterday. Good. You'll hope you make it. Hey, guys. See you tonight. So Loyola is a smaller school, but it definitely is known for its sports over the years. I knew a lot about the alums that were here, folks that played in Madison Square Garden. We've been pretty successful around here for a small school. I, I look at the girls softball team, they've won over 38 titles. The girls basketball team in recent years have won about 12 titles under coach Dave Palavino. We had good volleyball here, cross country and track have blossomed over the years. And you know, our baseball team has picked it up. I'm pretty proud of the accomplishments of students here, considering all that's on their plate, academically, socially, especially in this day and age with social media. I think athletics and sports and being on teams prepares young people for life to be positive by the discipline that's given by coaches. You have goals and you learn to achieve them or not achieve them, but it's the journey and the lessons that are learned are invaluable. And I think kids take those lessons with them in their lives. I think athletics is a great training ground. It's also a spiritual journey. And uh, you know, you measure growth, your skill, it's competitive, which is what the world is. It's a great preparation. He's a wonderful coach, he's a great coach. You know, you don't win over 400 games just by luck. In New York State, there's the New York State Association of Independent Schools. There are hundreds of schools that play within the New York State Association of Independent Schools. In basketball, he's the third winningest coach of all time, and he's a better softball coach. He's won more set championships in softball than he's won in, in basketball. I played uh, softball at Loyola for four years. Um, I'm proud to say we were undefeated all of that time. He was an integral part of that success, and um, he just really cared. He's um, a complete supporter of you no matter what, and he wants you to do the best for you, not for him. You can go into the gym and see year upon year upon year how many championships we have won, right? And that's a great accomplishment, but the championships are not everything. His uh, name will probably adorn the gym for all we know. Coach A is honest, he's accountable, he expects you to be accountable. He wants you to work hard, he wants you to control the things you can control, your effort. He doesn't care about missed shots, made shots. He wants all out of you. He wants the best version of yourself when you don't know what the best version of yourself is. The players provide the motivation in a lot of ways, along with my work ethic. They provide the fun part of it. And you work at it. It's a lot of work. There's a lot of grinding. And there's no getting around it. It just doesn't happen. The basketball program grew steadily. In my first three years, we were like a rocket ship into orbit. We took off from that, and that group provided us with a base to work off, and uh, we carried that momentum into the future. John O'Brien was a really good point guard. Uh, he took us to the finals. John Smith was a shooter. Then we had Dan Tuberty, who was an all-around player. And then we went to camp at Fordham one summer, and we won the NCAA division, the small school division. And that was the start of it. He had an intensity level that I wasn't used to. I don't think a lot of the players were used to based on our JV experience. And you could tell when he came in, he wanted to win. He wanted to change the culture. We had just moved into the Independent School Athletic League, and the time was ripe for 
Loyola to ascend and really compete with the rest of the schools. We had been in the MAPS division in the 80s and were kind of the doormat of that league. So I think Coach A saw that he had a chance to really take the school and the team to a new level. Uh, playing for Coach A was, uh, was challenging at some points, uh, beneficial and always fun. Big highlight was at the Garden, we beat the collegiate school in double overtime when Nick Nolan hit a three-pointer from NBA range. The whole school was there to see it. It was, it was a great day. And then we climbed up when a kid named Maury Six entered the school. We won three championships, league championships in, the, in a row at the ISAL. And we went to two state finals, and we lost in the finals, but they were great games. Coach A can definitely be intense at times in a good way. He's able to balance the fact that the person is there and at the same time, he wants the best out of you as the competitor that you are and can be. For a small school, we were like the little engine that could. In terms of us getting that reputation as a uh, basketball school, it's been a challenge and a lot of fun, a lot of hard work, but I think it paid off. Coach A was an incredible mentor. I always felt that he gave everything he had to prepare us and many life lessons taught in those practices. And, you know, he demanded the most from us. He, he expected that we gave 100% with everything we did. He was always comfortable just going for it. And I think that's what I always took away from him. Physically, we probably didn't compete with a lot of the schools, but we were mentally sharper. And we stayed in a lot of close games because of the tenacity and, and the practices that he put us through. He would take coaching clinics with Krzyzewski and all the greats, and he brought that all back, and we benefited from this college-level coaching at the high school level. He loved the timeouts. So in the timeouts, he would draw up these incredible plays, and they'd be very intense. And we were, we were up at Riverdale, and we were in a game that we probably shouldn't have been in. We, we, I think we were down two points with the ball in the final possession. Our best player, Dan Tuber, had fouled out. So he was upset about that, and, and we kind of had one opportunity to win this game, and he just draws the play up from Hoosiers. He's like, we're going to run the picket fence. Don't get caught watching the paint dry. He's like, Smith, you're going to take the shot. And he's like, you got it? I was like, I got it. We go out there, we run the picket fence. I missed. But it was a hell of a time. If we had the three-point line when John Smith was around, he might have held a record. Because right now, I think Isaac Cohen has the record. He had seven or eight threes in one game. And John was close to that. Uh, I, I can't recall the numbers, but the guy had a pure shot, especially on his release. So a funny story about Fred is our coaches would have to drive the school van to games. Which was a pretty battered old thing. It was like a 16-passenger team van, and we were going to an away game. And the muffler was like banging on the, on the street as we were driving it. And I had a pullover. The muffler was uh, off. And we had just lost, and he was upset, and he had enough of it, and people were joking around on the back. He is pissed, like beyond pissed, like just fired up. Um, every every other word out of his mouth is unbelievable. Some, you know, four-letter words are flying out. You know, it's it's intense in the car. Yeah, my words are pretty salty. Uh, they were fooling around too much in the back there, you know. And all of a sudden, he just stops in the middle of the FDR, pulls over the side, turns around, and lays into all of us. All of us are looking at each other. The cars are flying by, horns are going, lights are flashing. It was insanity. I said to Keith Chung, Keith, give me your F and tie. We're going to correct this. Grabbed someone's tie and he rolled under the van and just tied the muffler to the car with the, with the kid's tie. And he was just like, everybody shut up, enough. He's like, you shouldn't be laughing after a loss like that. But we got back on the road and we were okay with it. And uh, it's funny what the kids remember and like. And so he was serious, but he's also a lot of fun. He was passionate and he didn't care. He was going to make his point and he did. It was great. The stories get obviously embellished a little bit, but they're, they're all true uh, for the most part. I've enjoyed this 37 years immensely. Uh, it, there's been trials and tribulations, don't get me wrong. But, you know, we overcome them when you work at it as a team and uh, you surround yourself with great people. And it, that makes it easier. And smarter people, and that makes it easier. And you listen to everybody's ideas. I think Coach A's legacy is going to be some, something of someone who cared, uh, cared about people, cared about his kids, and he put the effort in when they put in a little bit of effort back. He was, he, if you showed him 
a little bit, he was gonna go 110% for you, and I think that's most of his legacy. I've learned so much from him over the years in ways I didn't realize, especially the lessons he taught us in between the lines, and I think he's gonna be the link to a lot of the past and the present of the school. I'm stepping down this season. I'm gonna miss the dailiness of it, but uh, I'll still be around a little bit, so uh, it won't totally be uh, forgotten. Coach A, I think, will be remembered as someone who, who lived and breathed and loved Loyola. Um, I think it's gonna be really hard for him to, to finally step away. I think as time grows, people appreciate what he's done here more and more, and he'll never be forgotten. Well, Coach, uh, you know how much uh, you mean to me. You inspired me to be a better person, to be a better professional. I just want to keep making you proud, and I just love you very much. Thank you for everything. Thank you for all that you've offered, Loyola. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your care. Thank you for your passion for coaching, your passion for our students, and thank you for being you. Thanks so much for everything you've done for, for me and for my sister who also went here, for the school in general. Um, we are your legacy and we couldn't be prouder. You've been the number one person in my corner since I walked into this school building. Thank you so much for the blessings. Thank you so much for the care. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you so much for just being you. It's exactly what we all needed. Congratulations, brother, and um, can't wait for more. Thanks for everything, Coach. One day we will go to Serendipity. Coach A, thank you. Thank you for recruiting me uh, to a high school that I never heard of, for being a friend, being a mentor, being a, a teacher and a coach, uh, a life coach. I love you, I appreciate everything you've done, and I attribute many of my successes to a lot of the lessons you instilled in me as a young 14 and 15 year old that I finally got when I was about 30, 35. But I appreciate everything and thank you. You don't fully understand the impact you have on uh, young people's lives. And uh, our relationship is a special one and it's one that I will cherish. Thanks, buddy. Thank you for everything you taught us inside the lines and outside the lines over the last 35 years. It was an honor to play for you. I'll never forget all the lessons and the moments. I treasure them. I love you.